Hello and welcome. I am Ben Berner, keeping it classy with a shirt and tie. And today we are finishing up our discussion on lightweight flywheels. Now, if you saw the first part of this, I broke down the math of lightweight flywheels and showed some real performance benefits. I kind of left out with the question of why anyone would choose the heavy dual mass flywheel over a lightweight performance upgrade. Well, it turns out there are some downsides to a lightweight flywheel. And in this video, we'll really explore those and explain what the problems are. So to do this, we've really got to talk about engines and how engines work. Specifically, we'll be talking about the flat six or boxer engine in the Porsche, but the principle applies to all engines. If you look at this photograph of a flat six engine, I believe this is actually a Subaru engine. I couldn't find a neat cutaway like this from a Porsche. You'll notice why it's called a flat six. The cylinders here are arranged in a flat plane. Now this has several advantages. It allows the auto manufacturer to keep the weight of the engine low in the vehicle. And it also aids in balancing. If you look at how each of the six pistons move in a flat six engine, they move together like this. They go in as a pair and out as a pair which means that the weight is always going out from the center at the same, on the same amount on each side and in from the center the same amount on each side, which keeps everything nice and balanced. You don't have one piston going up and one piston going down and different angles like a V engine or something like that. It's really nice, really balanced and really smooth. All right, great. So flat six engines are smooth and awesome. We already knew that. Why does that matter with a lightweight flywheel? Well, it turns out that the flat six engine was so smooth and so balanced that Porsche didn't find it necessary to add a harmonic balancer to the flat six engine. What's a harmonic balancer? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's this thing. Now this works because it has some thin rubber or other material right in here that soaks up vibrations. And on the outside, it has this heavy metal ring that has a fair bit of inertia and kind of evens things out. And if you've seen my video testing the dual mass flywheel in my Porsche, you'll probably think that that sounds kind of familiar to the different rotating parts on the dual mass flywheel and what they do. And in fact, it kind of is. Not the same thing, but similar. So when Porsche chose to build the engine without a harmonic balancer, they also put a dual mass flywheel on there to help even out some of those irregularities and vibrations. If you remember back from the previous video, the dual mass flywheel had twice the inertia of the lightened version. And this means that it is twice as hard to speed it up or slow it down. And there's a benefit to this. It means that any irregularities or unbalances in the engine, it's twice as hard for that engine to speed up or slow down kind of in an irregular way. The weight of the dual mass flywheel spinning as fast as it does kind of smooths things out because it makes it harder for the engine to shudder and change quickly. There are two factors that work here. One of them is the amount of energy in that spinning flywheel. And as you saw from the previous video, the amount of energy in a spinning flywheel depends on speed. So when the flywheel is spinning at idle, it has almost no energy. And when it's spinning at 7,000 RPM, it has a lot of energy. And the same is true with the lightweight single mass flywheel that you can put on, which means that if you put a lightweight flywheel on a track car or a car that spends most of its life at very high RPM, it still has a lot of energy stored in that flywheel. And that energy is going to resist vibrations and 
that sort of thing, just like the heavier one would at lower speeds. Which means that it's probably okay to put a lightweight single mouse flywheel on a track car, but it's not such a good idea to put it on a daily driver. You can still put it on daily driver, plenty of people do and they really like them, but you need to accept the fact that if you put a lightweight flywheel on a daily driver, you will shorten your engine life. It's just a reality of the fact that you're increasing the vibrations. Now, Porsche does make a 911. The 911 GT3 RS, I believe, that has no harmonic balancer and no dual mass flywheel. But it is built to extremely high specifications and balanced very closely. So it doesn't have these problems. If the engine in your car was balanced for a dual mass flywheel and you put a single mass flywheel on there, you're introducing vibrations that will probably eventually lead to your engine being ruined. Now it might not happen right away and something's gonna take your engine out anyway. So that may not necessarily be a deal breaker, but it's definitely something to think about. <clears throat> the last thing about dual mass flywheels is about the shifting itself. Dual mass flywheels are called dual mass flywheels because they have two parts that kind of give and flex separately. When you engage the transmission, if you kind of screw it up, the flywheel will actually spring and rotate without all of that force being applied directly to your engine. So it kind of acts like a shock absorber when you miss those shifts or if it's a little bit rough. Again, if you're on the track and you're making short, quick, fast shifts, you're probably fine. But if you're on a daily driver and every once in a while you make a rough shift, the dual mass flywheel will prevent all of that shock and energy from going into your engine and causing wear and damage. A final note about drivability and why dual mass flywheels are a little bit easier to drive on the street has to do with the angular acceleration of the flywheel. If you look back at my calculations from the first video, you'll see that the lightened flywheel will speed up or slow down in about half the time that the dual mass flywheel will. This means that if you're in traffic or maybe you're just making slower shifts and you don't perfectly rev match, the speed of the engine will drop or accelerate really quickly. With a dual mass flywheel, you can kind of let off the gas, shift really quickly, and your engine's probably still pretty much at the same RPM. Whereas with the single mass flywheel, if you don't do that really quickly or you don't rev match just right, your engine could easily drop to a slower RPM or you could rev it slightly and it would go way higher than you need to. So it's a little bit harder to get the rev matching right when you're shifting and have that engine turning at the speed that you would expect it to turn when you shift. So you gotta be really precise and really fast. Again, not a problem with track cars, maybe a problem in traffic. Hopefully that explains why I chose the Porsche dual mass flywheel and why Porsche chose the Porsche dual mass flywheel. Since my car is a daily driver, it spends most of its time on the street, the dual mass flywheel made sense. But again, the single mass flywheel does have some real performance gains, but it may not be worth it unless it's a track car. So if you're tracking your Porsche, single mass flywheel, absolutely, almost certainly worth it. If you're not, you probably wanna think long and hard before you make that change. That being said, Plenty of people have put a single mass flywheel on their daily driver and have liked it. So you kind of have to take that information and make your own decision, of course. But this is my decision and uh, yeah, those, that's my logic and the math behind it. All right, well thanks as always for watching. Really appreciate it, you guys are awesome. If you can like, subscribe and comment, it definitely helps me out, I appreciate it. I will hopefully see you around for the install of my dual mass flywheel onto my Porsche, coming soon.